what is the narrative that you must believe and repeat? The narrative you must believe and repeat is that all of American history is rooted in bigotry and evil. All of America's institutions are bigoted and evil. And that America is uniquely evil. Because what you can't do is contextualize the United States. You can't contextualize our history. You can't point out that America is, was not unique in, in allowing slavery. America was unique in working to get rid of slavery. Western civilization is unique in that way. It took Western civilization to end slavery. Slavery still exists in many non-Western parts of, of the world today, okay, like en masse. Officially, Saudi Arabia didn't abolish slavery until 1963, guys. Okay, so like 100 years after the Civil War. It took Western civilization to end sl Western civilization is uniquely good because of the good stuff it did. Western civilization is like the rest of humanity in terms of all the bad stuff it did. It is uniquely good in terms of the good stuff that it did. But for the left, the narrative is that America is uniquely evil. And so this prompts people like Tim Kaine to say something so historically ignorant is almost beyond belief. He says that America created slavery. Like the United States created slavery. He doesn't say just America. The United States created slavery. Now, that's an absurdity on its face. First of all, the United States didn't actually form until 1776. Until then, it was British colonies, right? So even if you believe the 1619 Project, the United States inherited slavery from colonists who had been there for 150 years. But as it turns out, he's not even right about this. Slavery in the Western Hemisphere did not originate with Americans. It didn't originate with British colonists. But here's Tim Kaine being a complete and utter buffoon because he is a complete and utter buffoon who's about to go stage a holdup on a train, apparently. He's always wearing these bandanas. He can't just get a regular mask. Got to wear the bandana. It looks like he's going to participate in a holdup. Anyway, here was Tim Kaine. Remember, this guy was almost the vice president of the United States. Here he was yesterday. The first African-Americans in into the English colonies came to Point Comfort, Virginia in 1619. They were slaves. They'd been captured against their will. But they landed in colonies that didn't have slavery. There were no laws about slavery in the colonies at that time. The United States didn't inherit slavery from anybody. We created it. It got created by the Virginia General Assembly and the legislatures of other states. It got created by the court systems in colonial America and sense that enforced fugitive slave laws. It was, we created it. We created it. He says, we created it and maintained it over centuries. In my lifetime, we finally stopped the practices. We've never gone back to undo it. I know I feel like we've undone the legal regimes that allowed slavery. I feel like we undid that a while ago. And also we've spent the last 50 years undoing the regimes of Jim Crow, it feels like. He says, stopping racist practices after 350 or 400 years, but then taking no effort to dismantle them is not the same as truly combating racist, racism. Taking no steps to dismantle them? We've literally spent every waking hour in the American federal government trying to dismantle Jim Crow. I mean, what, what does he think the Civil Rights Act was? I mean, seriously, we've spent $5 trillion on poverty programs that were largely designed by their creators in order to alleviate a lot of the disproportionate impact of things like Jim Crow. Also, Tim Kaine's just dead wrong on the history. In order to paint America as uniquely evil, he has to ignore the fact that slavery has been the actual rule rather than the exception across all of human history. It existed for the Greeks. It existed for the Romans. It existed for the ancient Hebrews. It existed in Native American tribes, by the way, pre-existing the coming of Western civilization. It was British colonists, not Americans, who imported slaves to America. Spanish colonists held slaves in the New World long prior to 1619. They began importing African slaves to Hispaniola, which is now Cuba, in 1501, 100 years prior to the arrival of British colonists. The first African slaves arrived in Spanish Florida in 1526. Slavery was not uncommon among Native American tribes either. Captives were regularly taken and made into slaves for particular tribes. Slavery was common in Latin America and, and in Mesoamerica. So the, this idea, the, the idea that America is uniquely evil is something that Tim Kaine has to rely upon. And if you don't repeat and believe, then it's because you are unwoke. You are unwoke. Repeat and believe. Repeat and believe. Just absolute insanity. And, but, but again, bad history lies at the root of all this. By the way, people in the Democratic Party don't even know their history. Hysterically, I mean, this is really quite funny. A top mainstream fact checker wrote on Tuesday, you remember the Democrats just a few weeks ago? It was actually last week. They wore kente cloths. You remember this? In the most obvious moment of cultural appropriation in human history, a bunch of old white Democrats who couldn't even get up after kneeling knelt while wearing kente cloths. But you get if Mitt Romney had worn one to a Black Lives Matter rally, he would have immediately been called out as an old white dude trying to appropriate cultural symbolism. Nancy Pelosi does it in Hero of the Republic. Hero and of the Republic. And well, it turns out that uh, according to a top mainstream fact checker, Kente cloths were, quote, historically worn by an empire involved in the West African slave trade. Whoops. <laughs> USA Today fact checked the following statement from a Facebook user. Yesterday, the Democrats wore Kente scarves and knelt down for their photo ops. So check this out. Kente cloth was worn by the Ashanti. It's made of silk, so the affluent wore it. The Ashanti were also known as slave owners and traders. Whoops. The USA Today rated the claim true. 
saying that the kente cloth was historically worn by the Asante people of Ghana who were involved in the West African slave trade. Well, that's that's awkward. That's awkward. Um, yeah, it turns out that, that slavery is not unique to America. And also, if you're going to culturally appropriate, do it better, Democrats. Really, really well done. But the good news is that we are fixing all the things, all the things that are really generating racism in America. Those are the things we have to fix. So Quaker Oats has now decided to drop its Aunt Jemima brand because it was stereotypical and based on antebellum stereotypical images of black people. That's fine. You want to drop the brand? All to the good. Really, seriously, enjoy yourself. That's fine. Quaker Oats can do exactly what it wants. I also hope that they drop the, the Quaker Oat brand because that is also based on a stereotype about Quakers being honest as the day is long in all of this. But the, dropping the Aunt Jemima brand, more power to you. You want to do it? Fine. But if are we really going to pretend that people have been eating like the pancake batter from Aunt Jemima for years and that this evinced, that this evidenced some sort of toxic racism? I mean, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I feel like Aunt Jemima's cake batter and, and pa pancake, they're, they're, they're kosher. I feel like I've been eating that for a long time and it has never once occurred to me that, that race has anything to do with the pancake batter. Like, may, again, you want to get rid of a stereotypical symbol? Enjoy. But are we going to pretend that this is making like a real difference in American life? Because if so, you're an idiot. Like if you really believe that race, racism solves, we got rid of the Aunt Jemima symbol. We're not, we're not just doing that, by the way. Apparently, Kellogg's cereal boxes have been added to the list of supposedly racist symbols by a disgraced leftist former politician in the UK. This is according to Breitbart. Fiona Os Onasanya, a former Labour Party MP who's kicked out of parliament by uh, her own voters, uh, has called on Kellogg's to justify why Rice Krispies is represented by three white boys while the Cocoa Pops, uh, the Cocoa Puffs mascot is a monkey. Yes, clearly Kellogg's... It, uh, 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 I, I, there are no words. There are no words. Solving racism by going after the white elves. Oh, the white elves on the Rice Krispies box. Solving racism. Did you know that every like on this video creates one additional leftist tier? Don't ask me why. That's called science. To take advantage of this amazing opportunity, hit the like button.